Hi, my name is Dr. Jim Ave, and I am the professor for ATR 580, Athletic Training Research Methods 1 at Indiana Wesleyan University. I want to welcome you to our class. Um, the purpose of this presentation is to provide just an overview of our class. Um, so let's start with, uh, hopefully you have downloaded the syllabus and you have it in front of you. You notice on the screen that I have blocked out my contact information, but you have that in your syllabus. I like to start our classes with a, a Bible verse. And the verse that I picked for this class is Psalm uh, chapter 139, verses 1 through 3 from the English Standard Version. Um, I think King David wrote this, and he wrote, O oh Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Uh, this is a passage that I really like because it teaches us that God knows us inside and out, when we're asleep, when we're awake, when we, uh, he knows where we're going, where we've been, and he still loves us. Uh, I picked this particular verse for this class because uh, we're talking about research methods and uh, we have to search and know things. Not a very good connection, but let's loose. All right, so um, for this class, you're going to take a total of three research methods type courses. Uh, this is the first one it's at, uh, where I'll introduce you to uh, various research methods that are used in athletic training, but it also research methods that are used in a broader sense within uh, kinesiology, health, PE, uh, and anything to do with exercise, science, those types of things. Um, so the analogy that I use for this class is that in this class, I'll teach you the bones of research. And then in our ATR 590, which is Athletic Training Research Methods 2, we'll go over the, we'll put skin and fat and muscle on research methods, and then an evidence-based, uh, in our evidence-based class, which is ATR 565, will apply that information to our clinical practice. So in this class is pretty straightforward. Um, I'll teach you about the methods. Um, and then in the 590 class, you'll apply the material and then ATR 565, the evidence-based, will make it even more specific in, a, in your clinical practice. <clears throat> so this is a three-unit course. Obviously, you have to be admitted into the program to actually take the class. But I want to talk about our textbook for the class, two main textbooks. Uh, it's Thomas, Nelson, and Silverman. Research Methods and Physical Activity. This is the seventh edition. You can get the sixth edition. The main difference between the sixth edition and the seventh edition is in the seventh edition, the authors have included a chapter on mixed methods, which we'll address in our class, which mixed methods means we're using more than one specific type of method in the research when we're designing research. Um, one of the things that I have not found is a good athletic training methods book. Um, and so one of the things that we're going to do in this class is uh, we'll notice that in our textbook, they use different terminology than when you are reading a uh, article in from like the Journal of Athletic Training or some of the PT journal articles. They classify or define their research methods differently than in our textbook. And so in some of our assignments, what I'm going to do is have you try to determine uh, the link between our textbook definition of and description of a particular research method and what the Journal of Athletic Training and other 
uh, allied health or health professionals are calling that same method. They're the same methods, just they're, they use a different title for the methods. So for example, uh, in our textbook, it's, we'll use the term uh, random pre and post test random uh, experimental design in the JAT, in the Journal of Athletic Training, that's typically called a random control trial. So I want to make sure that we can bridge the gap to, to understand that there is really no difference between the methods that are described in our textbook and what we typically read in our journals. The other book that's required is by Gordon Smith, Courage and Calling, Embracing Your God-Given Potential. Um, you don't have to worry about the revised and expanded edition. Just make sure you get the Courage and Calling. W one thing I've found that some students, when they get a um, different version, is that the chapters don't line up. So if you can, try to get this particular version. So we're using this book for our devotionals. We're going to use this book in both the 580 class and the 590 class. So the first half of the book we'll do in 580, and the second half of the book we'll do in 590. So speaking of the devotionals, just uh, as a reminder, um, um, maybe not so much a reminder, I'm not sure what classes you've had yet, but for the devotionals in the time that you're here at Indiana Wesleyan, is that these devotionals can be kind of personal at times. I uh, just want to make sure that we're all, all comfortable dis discussing some of the issues that we're going to talk about in this, in my class and in other classes that you're going to be taking here at the university. Um, I want to make sure that we can treat one another with uh, respect. Uh, we may not always agree with one another, with our opinions and some of the things that we're going to talk about, and that's okay. Uh, one of the things that kind of drives me nuts now is that we can't just have a discussion about things um, and be okay with disagreeing with another person about some things. It's okay to disagree with some people. You, we all shouldn't agree on, on everything. God didn't make us that way. He gave us the ability to have our own opinions about things but we can still treat with one another with respect and with love. And that's what I want to do with our time of our um, devotionals and respect one another. Even if you may not agree, I may not agree with some of the things that you're going to post on the devotionals and that's okay. Um, so just so you know how we're going to work the devotions week one, will be more of a, I'll ask you some questions in the, in the uh, forum discussion board. You will answer those discussions and you'll uh, be required to uh, read and respond to two other students. So then in week two, we'll start our discussion about this uh, Courage and Calling book. You'll read chapter one, uh, provide how this material can impact you both professionally and personally. It's about a paragraph. And then you'll provide two, one to two open-ended questions. Now, open-ended questions are questions that cannot, cannot be answered with a yes-no response. So it should be elicit a response from your fellow students. It can be anything on the professional side, on the personal side, anything that kind of struck you as you're reading the material, things that you want to know from your fellow students in the class. Uh, so you'll post that. Typically Sunday is when I have those things due. You'll read and respond to two other students by Wednesday of the next week. Uh, and that discussion will go through Friday. Now I typically will not respond um, to the forums of the threaded discussions. Uh, but I'm reading, and if I see something, I'll email you directly when, if I have questions about what you're posting in this particular forum, and especially in the, in the other forums. If I'm reading a bunch of errors, not so much in the 
urgent calling, but in some of the other assignments, I have forms, posts, and I, I'm seeing a common error. I'll post a, a announcement or send an email out about those type of errors. It's difficult for me to give individualized feedback in the forms because everybody else can read it. I'd rather give you that type of individualized feedback to you via email. Speaking of feedback, one of the ways I give students feedback is, is within papers. You'll turn in assignments. I'll either uh, give you feedback, well, I will give you feedback in the paper itself. Uh, if, if I'm in Microsoft Word, right, I am in Microsoft Word right now. So what I would typically do is insert a comment and blah, 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 whatever I have to say to you. I'll give you the feedback that way. That's one way I'll do that. Or the other way is I'll, I'll give you feedback in, uh, inside your paper using a red font. Um, so that's where I'm giving you feedback. So when I turn your assignments back to you, that, that's where you need to look for my feedback is comments like this or in your paper itself. Other way that I give feedback is um, I'll give you the answers after the assignment's done. Um, so you can see the answers. And so, because basically in this class, I'm having you build on material. Some of the things that you're gonna be doing a lot of in this class is developing purpose statements, research questions, and null hypotheses. And I teach you how to do that over and over and over again, because to me, that's the bones of research is we have to understand what is our research question, what's the purpose of our research, and what do we expect uh, to happen? And so you'll see that a lot in this class and especially in the 590 class. So you'll see in this class that, oh, let's go ahead and go into our class. Um, this is a class, it's not the only class. So just so you can see what this class looks like. So I'm in the home, home page of our class. Hopefully by the time you've start watching this video you've made it to um, to this video so you're gonna typically I would suggest go to content and I have created a video to teach you how to get to this too but uh, you're here right now I have another video about success in class and the week one overview is going to provide you an overview of the class and then on this page is uh, some videos that I've made about how about the research process. Now these videos were made uh, for my class at the university I work at, which is Fresno Pacific University, um, and from a class called KIN. I'm right here, Research Methods and Kinesiology. I made these videos quite a while ago, so some of these are not the best videos in the world. Um, so you'll hear me talk about certain things that have to do with Fresno Pacific. I try to give you feedback in here where I've talked about that, where I don't pay attention to this, blah, blah, blah. So you need to read the material in, in here so you have that information. And then also in week one, you have your devotional. You have your assignment for week one, and then we're done with week one. Week two, you're not gonna have access until um, the second week. I typically will make the each week available on Sunday. Um, so you have Sunday to Sunday to look at the work. I typically try to give you feedback fairly quickly with written work. You turn in assignments, try to give you that feedback uh, by Tuesday, Wednesday at the latest, because I'm teaching classes for Indiana Wesleyan, and obviously I'm teaching classes at Fresno Pacific, so I try to do all my grading Monday and Tuesday. Uh, it's important to me to get you feedback as quickly as possible, especially when I know that assignments build on one another. And let's see, anything else I want to make sure that you have information on? You can see the, the assignments we're going to have 
two uh, examinations. You have a midterm, which will be in material up to the week of the midterm with the midterm, and then you have a final, and a final will be material from the midterm, the week after the midterm until the final week. So weeks five. So the midterm will be in week four, the final will be in week eight. So the midterm will be from week one to week two material. The final will be material from week five, six, seven, and eight. You'll have two types of exams. You'll have an in-class multiple choice type uh, examination and a take home. The take home will be based on the assignments I've been doing, the uh, in class multiple choice exam will be based on your readings uh, from the textbook. So each of those exams are worth 100 points, so that's 200 points of the class. You have 11 uh, learning activities. Um, oops, that's a mistake on my syllabus. That should be 10 points each. Uh, so you have 11 assign 11 learning activities, 10 points assignment, 10 points each assignment. For 110 points total and then your devotional discussions are 10 points each for 70 points and here's the grading scale um, and if you have questions about this class please 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 contact me one area that you can contact me is we go back into our class we go to the course dashboard see the course forms these fact this faculty form right here is what I another way is looking as question answer question and answer form post your questions here and so I can answer your questions because more than likely if you have questions and you answer ask those in email other students in a class have the exact same question so you can answer ask questions in a faculty forum. You can email me. Uh, you can call me. It's best that if we need to talk on the phone is that we schedule an appointment because I'm pretty busy uh, and I want to make sure I can dedicate time that we can talk. If you do just call me, make sure I probably will not answer. I typically do not answer my cell phone if I don't recognize the number. That's okay. Just leave me your name. Uh, tell me that you're in my class and you want to talk to me about an assignment. You'll see that I have time restraints on my cell phone. I, I have three small kids and I'm pretty busy once I get home from, I'm busy all the time, but when I get home from work, I'm taking care of my kids. Um, so, but I'm here to help. The, I know that research methods is a confusing uh, class. I've taken a lot of research methods class. I've taught this class for, uh, I think since 2007. So I've been teaching this class for a long time. I've taught this class at for Indiana Wesleyan for several years now. Um, so I'm here to help. If you're not sure, please ask. I want the biggest mistake students can make is just ask the professor if you're not sure what's going on. I want to help you. I want to help you understand the material. I want you to help you to be successful in this class. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why you'll see one of the other presentations I have is how to be successful in this class. I want to make sure that um, you are successful. That's critically important to me is that you're my colleague in athletic training. You're my peer in athletic training. Yes, I'm a few years ahead of you clinically and educationally, but that doesn't mean anything. We're still colleagues. You're, you're my peer and I want you to be successful as an athletic trainer and as, an edu as a student in this class. So I'll end by saying I look forward to our time together. We're going to have several classes together, and I look forward to uh, our time together in our, uh, in our classes.